Hi, this is Mike. I'm an alcoholic. My sobriety date is July 1st, 1984. I just want to cover step one. Step one in the book Alcoholics Anonymous says, We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. So for step one, for me, as an alcoholic, I am powerless over alcohol. What that means is that when I pick up the first drink and put alcohol in my body, I experience a physical craving for more alcohol. And that pretty much sums up what a alcoholic is, is a physical reaction to alcohol once alcohol has been put in your body. And in my case, I just want to talk from my experience. I drank for 12 years, and when I drank, I would drink and drink and drink. And it wasn't ever a situation where I would consider social drinking or, you know, where you just had a couple beers and stopped. I experienced a, in effect, kind of like a artificial spiritual experience in a way because I ex experienced a sense of ease and comfort. My problems went away. Mentally, I was... I had some relief. I didn't was wasn't uh, obsessing over problems or emotional pain. And when I pick up a drink, I drank the feel good. Drank that way for years and years, and it was a part of me as functioning in the world of, was to to drink alcohol. To get back to step one, I am parlous in the sense that. Once I pick up the first drink, I cannot safely stop, continue to drink. And again, that's pretty much the definition of an alcoholic is a physical craving. In the book Alcoholics Anonymous, it talks about having a physical craving. And for me, the 12 years I drank, I in the 36 years of sobriety, I can look at my life and say it had a lot of consequences wrecked cars, jobs, lost jobs, divorce, bankruptcy, jail. Those things are considered the consequences or collateral damage of drinking as an alcoholic. That is the unmanageable part is the outside behavior. You have a lot of problems functioning when you're intoxicated drunk the inside part is the emotional pain I remember being so shy when I was young and self-conscious and when I first started drinking you know I just have a couple of beers to be myself you know and it did take away my inhibitions and there was you know in the early days some fun or a sense of ease and comfort or what they say in the big book, happy, joyous, and free, I I did have that. And it's uh, what happened was that I relied on alcohol as much as I would breathe through my lungs to stay alive. So in step one, I admit I am powerless over alcohol. Yes, I am powerless. I, and, and I think it's on page 30 in the book, Alcoholics Anonymous, it says, do you concede to your innermost self? And I, I certainly do concede to my innermost self. This thing is bigger than me. It, again, it's more, you know, I, it's not about the stopping, it's the starting. There's a couple questions in the book uh, where it says, uh, when drinking, can you control it? And I, I certainly couldn't control the drinking. If I was drinking, I certainly couldn't stop if when I wanted to. And the second question, I'm just paraphrasing, uh, in the book, it talks about if not drinking, do you go back to drinking? I mean, is there, is there anything stopping you from drinking again? And especially when you have experienced, or at least I have experienced, a lot of pain and suffering and consequences. And I go, would go back to it time again, time again. And 
I just wanted to drive that point home. It's it's about the starting. So here's here's me, you know, not drinking. I'm I'm irritable, restless, and discontent. And I can't stand being in my own skin. And so I pick up the first drink, and then once that happens, I experience a physical craving for more. And that's the cycle, you know, rinse and repeat. That's the cycle of an alcoholic. And, you know, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, so I am powerless over alcohol. I do concede to my inner myself that I'm an alcoholic. And hopefully I did a fair job of describing what an alcoholic is. There is some text in the book, Alcoholics Anonymous, where it talks about the moderate drinker, where a person can take it or leave it. And, and when I was... In my drinking days, I, I certainly couldn't take it or leave it. It was something I would go to uh, just to kind of keep myself glued together. And then the second part, they talk about the heavy drinker. And it says, you know, if here's a good reason. Stop for your family or a warning from your doctor. A heavy drinker can stop or moderate. I kind of blew past all that. I never really had a warning from my doctor, but my family took back seat to alcohol. It was number one. Wouldn't consider myself a heavy drinker. It really does boil down to step one is when I when I picked up the first drink, I triggered a reaction, a physical craving, and what the insanity part is or the unmanageability for me would be. If I wasn't drinking, I would be thinking about drinking, and it would just constantly cycle in my life. It is a death sentence for an alcoholic. In my, for this alcoholic, there's a lot of pain I went through, and I, for the longest time, I thought maybe I had a death wish. You know, I I had a lot of car wrecks, but that doesn't really qualify me as an alcoholic. What really defines me as an alcoholic. I, I really want to drive this point home is when I pick up that first drink, I can't stop on my own willpower. I have no brakes. This is the biggest hurdle is to kind of experience a defeat or surrender and acceptance or acknowledgement that yes my body is built differently and yes I think differently and uh, I can't safely drink alcohol ever again in my life.